welcome back. I'm DeShanna Love and your friendly librarian and I'm back with some book love. So let's chat. Uh, it hasn't really been very long since I put out the last video. This is probably the quickest turnaround I've ever had. However, I'm getting ready to leave for spring break for over a week and uh, I wanted to go ahead and get this one filmed so that I could do some editing while I was on the road and get another one posted while I'm away. So I've read a couple and that's where I always want to start. That's not what these are. These are the revisits. Um, and corrections, that sort of thing. Um, and I know it doesn't look like I've read a lot because that seems to be several that I don't actually own, um, but I'm gonna start there. And then I'll do some of these revisits, corrections, and some that, like I picked up in other halls and I told you that I would put the review out there and I hadn't done that yet. This is my To Be Red stack. I've been posting every Sunday-ish. My Sunday shelfie, hashtag. Uh, and um, I'm enjoying doing that. So I've been doing it since the beginning of this year. I try and do it every Sunday. It doesn't happen every Sunday, but you know, Sunday, Monday, sometimes Tuesday. Um, but I'm enjoying that. It kind of helps me uh, regroup on a Sunday and think about what I want to do for the next week. Like, what are my goals? And it also has made me notice that there are a couple of books that I've spent way too long on. And I really just need to like wrap those up and move them on. So I've got those and I might have a bit of a book haul, but I don't feel like I really have that much of a book haul. And then if I have some extra time, I would really like to review some of those books that I've been reviewing in my high school classroom. Uh, just to recap, in case you're new here, I do teach high school uh, freshman English. Um, and I, re I recommend at least one book every day in class, uh, something that I have there in our classroom. And I've usually picked it up through thrift. Um, we have a foundation in my um, town that I work in called the Valley Foundation. And they gave us a lot of books. Like we requested the titles we wanted and they purchased those for us um, this year. So that has been really nice because again, I only asked for titles that I knew that I want to recommend. Um, and either I had read them or I want to be reading them and recommend them. So that's worked out really well. So give me a minute as always to clean the desk off here. And then we'll start with those books then, that I have read and reviewed since the last time I talked to you. All right, so you know, whenever I'm moving things around, most of the time I'm listening to something on audio. So currently I'm listening to this. It is Beaches, Bungalows, and Burglaries by Tanya, I'm gonna say Capes, K-A-P-P-E-S, it's a cozy author. Um, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but I'll talk to you about that in um, a little bit when I get back to what I'm currently listening to. But um, listening to that while I'm moving things around. I hope you can see that. I think you can. Uh, but that's the audio that I'm listening through the Liddy app from my public library. So let's get started. I really, I don't have too many to talk to you about, but um, I have a few here since the last time that I was on here, which looks like... Thursday, February 29th. Oh yeah, that's not too long, but um, we are currently sitting at Wednesday, uh, March mm, 20th, mm, 17, 18, 19, 20th, yes. So let me do that. There we go, Wednesday, March 20th. So just in case you're interested if you're watching this video, uh, it is uh, 2024. And we are in the middle of March-ish. We're getting ready to head out onto our spring break on Friday. Um, we'll be going down to see my son. He lives in Western Kentucky and his fiance. Um, so super excited. I usually get a lot of reading and just lovely, lovely time when I'm down there. And it's beautiful down there in God's country. So the first one I want to talk about um, that I finished was um, Agatha Christie's N or M. Um, it's a Tommy and Tuppence novel. If you've been following me, I am reading Agatha Christie's um, novels, actually work. So her novels, short story collections in chronological order. I am following the list that is on the Agatha Christie website where they have a chronological list. I am doing that with a group of ladies. Uh, we meet every three weeks or so to read and discuss. We meet via Zoom. You're more than welcome to join us. The information um, should be down below in the notes. Um, and um, I don't know, this is maybe like number 35 that we've read in chronological order. We started in 2022, I think. January 2022, pretty sure. Um, I'm not a Tommy and Tuppence fan. I'm not. I was hoping they would win me over in this one. They do not. They're goofy. Um, the adaptations are, they're beautiful as far as like eye candy, but they're terrible. They either don't follow the novels or the short stories, or I just don't like, I don't like Tommy and Tuppence. I don't like either one of them. Like I just, they're 
they're not Agatha Christie-ish for me. And I know they're hers, so they are Agatha Christie-ish, but I don't like them. Uh, but that's, this is the one that we read. I love these little vintage copies, little um, paperbacks. So this one said that it retailed for $2.95. I'm sure I paid more than that to purchase this, but I absolutely love them. My Agathas are up there. You'll, you'll see like the green, um, what is that? $4.50 from Paddington. If you can see that up there, that's my Agatha shelf. Um, those are the ones that are to be read. The ones I've already read are down here. Um, I'm going to do a little re, you know, organizing over the summer. And I think I'm going to put the Agathas all the way at the top because that's how it works for me. Uh, but I love the covers of these vintage um, paperbacks. I feel like they always pick two or three pictures, um, items of something that end up having something to do with the story. Um, and I really enjoy that. I think they're very well done. I'm not sorry I read it. Like, I'm so glad we're on this journey of reading Agatha Christie. We've learned so much. I just don't particularly like Tommy and Tuppence. Most of the time, it's like, even if I don't like it, um, after, after we talk about it on Zoom, um, I always like it a little bit better. And that's true with this one, too. Um, people just seem to give me a better perspective or they pull something out that I didn't notice. And I don't know. I always have a deeper appreciation after we've had our discussion. So I encourage you to meet up with people in real life, on Zoom, however it is uh, that works for you. We have a new bookstore here close um, in Loveland called Bike Trail Books, I believe, because we have a bike trail that runs through Loveland, um, Ohio. And um, I haven't been there yet, but man, it looks like their uh, book club game is strong. So I'm thinking about in the summer, maybe joining in on some of those. I was at my own book club that I started almost 30 years ago. Um, is it? it has been that long. Yeah, about 30 years ago, I started a book club when we first moved back to Blanchester and I started my master's work. And I had that last night. We discussed the Rag, Radcliffe's Ladies Reading Club, something like that. I don't know. I hope I, hope I brought my book back because I need to talk to you about that one. Um, but I think it's right here. We uh, discussed that one and I didn't love it and I didn't love N&M. &M, so I'm sorry. I'm reviewing books for you that I didn't love and wouldn't necessarily recommend, but that's okay. I mean, I'm just giving you a perspective and you can do with it whatever you want to. But let's go back to N&M &M first. This is our third Tommy and Tuppence, actually. It's our 39th Agatha. I feel like, yes, we are on a first name basis after, you know, two and a half years here. Uh, we're in that section where, depending on how big of an Agatha nerd you are, the, chronolo the chronology of when the novels came out is getting a little shaky. If you go by Wikipedia, or if you're going by the Agatha Christie app, or if you're going by the Agatha Christie website. So it's a little shady, but um, that's where we are. Wikipedia has Everything Evil Under the Sun, um, which was our last read, followed by this one. I'm sorry, so followed by... Um, five Little Pigs, but the Agatha site has Everything Evil Under the Sun followed by N or M by Tommy and Tuppence. I just really like smart heroes and heroines, and Tommy and Tuppence are both just a little too ridiculous for me. And I am a Murder, She Wrote fan, and I watch Hallmark movies and mysteries. I am used to bumbling people, but I don't like Tommy and Tuppence. They're just, they're awkward. Um, and this one is written during the war, like Agatha's, Agatha is writing it during the war, and it has like themes in it that come from the war, so it makes it a little weird. I do think it's interesting that um, I read that MI5 questioned Agatha after she put this book out because it hit a little too close to home. There was some truth in it, and they thought maybe there was an inside man giving her some information, but that wasn't true. Agatha said just it just was coincidence. No one was telling her anything. So I don't really recommend it, but I did read N and M by Agatha Christie. Um, the next one I do not have a copy of, and it's again another project of mine. I'm trying to read the Murder She Wrote books by Jessica Fletcher. Yes, I know she's not a real person, but her name is on the book as the author. Uh, but I think David Donald Bain is the other guy's name, that the other author's name that's on the front of the Murder, She Wrote books. Um, and I read the third one. Um, I think I read the first one maybe in December and the second one in January. So I was trying to do one a month, but I'm a little off. I just, I get caught up in reading other things. But um, this one was Rum and Razors. 
I am loving reading the Murder, She Wrote books. I watched the series for years. And then um, several years ago, I mean several years ago, pre-pandemic, um, I started, I went back and watched the Murder, She Wrote series in order. And I just love it. They're just so cozy and comfortable. And um, I just really, really enjoy them. So I watched the whole series. And then when I was done, it was one of those like, I miss it. I miss it so much. Um, and then whenever I realized that there were books, the books don't necessarily follow the series in order, but they're kind of thrown in there. But not all of the books are series like episodes, but some of them are. So I'm still trying to figure out and get my footing under that. But I've been checking for the first three and they don't seem to line up with episodes anywhere. So plan on doing a little falling down that rabbit hole a little bit over spring break. But I loved Rum and Razors. Um, the characters from the show are also in the books. The characters ring true. The first Murder She Wrote book, um, they had Ag or Agatha. Ha, ha, ha. They had Jessica doing some things that were not very Jessica-ish. But they cleaned that up and they also like re-released the novel cleaned up. Um, so if you're doing it now and you get the updated version, you won't even know anything happened. Um, but with Rum and Razors, uh, you do have Jessica leaving Cabot Cove. She is going to visit some friends on a tropical island. They've opened a resort there. Once she gets there, though, they're just, they're not the people she knew. Like, they just, they're acting weird. They're rude. Um, and then mayhem ensues and someone gets killed and Jessica's right in the middle of it. And believe it or not, not everybody appreciates a nosy Jessica. Um, and so I just really enjoy it. I enjoy the way that the story is told. Um, I read this in a paperback. I had to get it from the library because they did not have it on audio. Um, and even our library didn't have it. Our public library in Blanchester didn't have it. But they got it for me in her library loan. So again, if you are a patron or if you're not, become a patron at your um, local public library. And then just ask for what you need. Um, I do realize not everybody lives by a library with helpful librarians. I know that. I am a librarian and I am your friendly librarian. I am hel I am helpful. I, I love to connect people with uh, what it is that they're trying to find, whether it be information or books or whatever. I love that. Um, but, you know, you just kind of have to keep going back and maybe just try someone else when you're there. And maybe you just it just takes a little bit to get to the right person. But we have several very helpful people at our public library that I can work with. Um, and I get several books and movies, actually. I was watching the James Bonds in, in order. And uh, our library didn't have all of those. And I couldn't get them on platforms here at home. So I had to order some of those DVDs in our library loan. So I encourage you, work with your public library. It's a wonderful thing. Your tax dollars are paying for it. Support them. That was my 17th read of the year. My 18th read of the year uh, was... One of those Agatha Christie new updated novels. So Perot is in the, is the center of the novel that I read called Closed Casket. And I actually listened to the audio. It's by Sophie Hanna. I have um, read the other Sophie Hanna also. I listened to it in addition. Uh, the Monogram Murders, I think, was the name of that. It's been maybe a couple of years since I did that one. Um, and this one just popped up in my Libby. So I went ahead and, and got it. Um, it's a little long. Uh, it's very complicated, but it's very Agatha. Lots of characters. Perot, um, the audio, this audio is fabulous. I don't remember who the, um, the narrator is, but he does a fabulous, fabulous job of Perot. I loved it. Um, I loved the story. I love the setting. It's a, like a closed kind of mystery. It takes place in a um, like country manor house. But where is it? Because it's in, it's 1929, a country house closed murder. I don't know. It's in a weird place. Is it Scotland? I don't know. It's in a weird place. But um, the main lady, Lady Athelinda, has invited Perot and another inspector um, to her house for the weekend. And then she announces, ta-da, a very Agatha-like will change. And when she changes her will, of course, it leaves her family out. And she is not the one who ends up murdered, but she gets someone murdered. Like, through the whole thing, it happens. And she feels terrible. Uh, but Perot eventually figures it out and then lays it all, you know, out in front of people. It just is super, super true to Agatha. I really, really loved it. Um, but it is really, really long. 
I don't even, I mean, 10 hours, I don't know. It felt like it was a really, really long book, um, but I really loved it. I thought it was superb. I will continue reading the new Perot novels by Sophie Hanna. Um, so our next Agatha Reed is Body in the Library, which is another Miss Marple, and I'm super, super excited um, to continue getting to know Miss Marple. I feel like, I mean, we are 35 books in. We've only had an um, Miss Marple short story, and we did Murder in the Vicarage, which is a Miss Marple um, novel. But even when we did that, we were all surprised when we got to the end that you really don't learn very much about Miss Marple, Marple in that first Miss Marple mystery. So uh, super excited to read Body in the Library, but however, last night at my in-person book club, one of my Agathas that Zooms with, uh, um, with me every you know three weeks or so, she was there and I asked her if she had started it and she's almost finished and she said, I have bad news. You really don't get to know Miss Marple much better in this one either. And I'm just shocked because there's such a divide in Agatha um, land of, you know, which one? Is it Perot or is it Marple for you? And so many people pick Miss Marple and we are 35 books in and I know Perot. Like he is a friend of mine. I know him um, and I love him. So I just, I'm, I guess we're just going to get to know Miss Marple, but maybe just later, but I'm anxious to do so. So I need to just be patient. Anywho, um, hmm, why do I have this one on here? Ah. So I don't have the reviews out there for the other books that I have just finished. So I will be putting them out, but I want to go ahead and make the video. So I finished this Girl in Pieces. It is by Catherine, Kathleen Glasgow, who I think it is. Is the author of the Agathas, one of my favorite books from the last couple of years, my favorite young adult books. This is Kathleen Glasgow and Liz Lawson. I love this. There's a sequel to this. I have not read it yet, but it was in the um, books that were bought by the um, foundation. So I'm looking forward to reading that. I just haven't read it yet. But um, the Agathas is a murder mystery, young adult murder mystery. Um, and it's that modern kind of telling of a murder mystery um, where there's a, a young person and they're trying to solve a murder in their hometown. Um, and you know, they do the murder board. I don't know, I don't even, I don't know if I've done, if I've really talked to you about that kind of sub -genre, genre that's going on right now, but I love it. Um, but that's Kathleen Glasgow. So when I saw that one of my students was reading this, and I have a lot of students that are reading this, but when I saw one of my students reading this, I was like, oh, when you're finished, can I read that? And she's like, sure. So I started reading it. It's nothing like the Agathas. <laughs> the Agathas is light, it's fun. Yes, people are getting killed, people are being stalked, but it's my murder mystery kind of shows, and Girl in Pieces is not. <laughs> so, um, oh, I'm probably still going to give it four out of five, because it's very well done. The problem is, I feel like I've already read this book numerous times, um, it's the same kind of trope, and it's not my favorite trope. Therefore, it took me forever. Like, I think I've been reading this since January, I'm pretty sure. Now I am only reading it in my class. So in my classes, first 10 minutes, as much as I possibly can every day, first 10 minutes you're reading on your own and you're reading your independent reading. I really feel like that makes my kids um, rediscover their love of learning or their love of reading um, or just discover it to start with because I provide the time for, they, for them to do it and they buy into it. Now, I am fully aware at any point it could magnificently flop. It could. I mean, they could just not be doing it or be sitting there or, you know, taking a nap where I can't see them. I don't know. It could happen, but it hasn't. I've been back in the classroom for four years after spending 20 um, years in the library and those four years, I am adamant that you find something and you try a book and if you don't like it you get another one but you read the same you know book for the nine weeks and you just you commit to that book and uh it works i don't the majority works i'm not saying it works for everybody i know i still have stinkers but the majority of people read and we have been sharing books for the last four years back and forth i try and read what they're reading it's not always something that i enjoy or i like but um, I also can almost always find an appreciation for whatever it is that I'm reading. And that's how this is. So in this particular one, 
the main character, Charlie, is very broken. Um, she is pitiful. <laughs> she is not being raised. She's not being loved. Um, she gets herself into some situations where she is not even at her home. She's not with her family. Uh, and she gets put into some situations <coughs> that are very abusive. Um, she gets mixed up in terrible things, makes bad choices, um, self-destructs. Uh, and there are a lot of triggers in this book. If you're someone who needs trigger warnings, look them up for this book. I'm not big on trigger warnings, but um, I think that's why I was like, oh, I've already read this. I've read about girls that are in mental institutions and falling apart. I've read this already, but it's not. I mean, it is about that, but the way they deal with it is fresh and new and for a new generation. So, you know, over the years and years and years that I've been recommending these kinds of books to young adults, there's there are always really good ones. Um, but this is a new, fresh one. Now, I say new. It's in paperback, so it's been around for a while. 2016. So it's kind of older than I even thought. I didn't realize it was from 2016. That's surprising to me. But, um... It's just so, so good. So I'm going to highly recommend it. Four out of five. I haven't, re I haven't reviewed it yet, but I have some notes. So let me pull them up. So when I was reading it, I was like marking down some things that I really wanted to push out there in that um, it's a book about a topic we've heard about before, but she drops in a lot of references to art and literature. And then when she is telling you Charlie's story and how Charlie has to move like from one location to a next and she literally has to start over. I mean, she starts over with nothing. Um, it's a very honest discussion about how hard that is. Like, it, especially if you're a young person and you don't, you don't know how to do these things. Like, how do you go about getting a, a job or without any references or any kind of experience? And then how do you then go about finding a place to live and buying groceries and knowing who you can trust and who you can't and how do you break away from toxic people and keep them at bay when you're trying to heal yourself how do you do that and i just think it, it was just i thought the way she dealt with those kinds of topics is very fresh um opening a bank account and thinking about the fact that you know, she, maybe she got a job and someone was letting her live at their place until she got her feet underneath there. But how does she get a bank account? She doesn't know how to do that. She's never done that before. Um, and she's not surrounded by that many people that will help her. Now, that's the other thing that is well done, um, is trying to shine a light on people that will take advantage of you, like creepy, creepy old people who know that you're desperate and that's terrible. Um, and then just surrounding you're in a, you're in locations that have shady people and shady people are drawn to other people they can take advantage of like it's i don't know it's just so it's very raw it's very honest um there's a lot of talk about therapies some that are good some that are bad places institutions that she's been in um group homes some that are good some that are bad she has therapists some that are good some that are bad that being said, there's quite a bit of language in this. So um, if you are uh, suggesting it for a young adult, just make sure that they do know there is quite a bit of language in there and some very disturbing situations. She's living on the streets some of the time. She's living with people that do not treat her well. Like those things are in there. So just heads up for that. Um, and then just, I mean, some super gross descriptions of things that are going on, but it, I've always said, People endure this. If they endure it and people are writing about it, they're writing from a place of truth, even though it's not a true story, this story, I'm sure, has happened millions of times. Um, and so the least I can do is relate to it by reading someone's story. So I really did like it. No. <laughs> I really did appreciate it. But it took me so long to read it because I didn't want to read it in my free time. I wanted to read it so that I know what my kids are reading and I can recommend to the right person um, but honestly, this would need to be recommended um, to higher level high school students or students that I know are already dealing with some of those issues or reading things that are already on this level because it's a little more risque. 
So there's that. All right, let me get that Radcliffe Ladies Reading Club. Okay, so this is the Radcliffe Ladies Reading Club by Julia Brown Thomas. Um, it says on the front, author of For Those Who Are Lost Also. Um, this is going to be a three out of five. I'm not recommending it. I didn't like it. Um, I don't know how many of my book club ladies actually watch my videos, so they might be like, really? Because you didn't say any of that last night. Uh, it's my book club. I created it 30 years ago. I feel like I am a member, absolutely, but I'm definitely the moderator, and I don't like to walk in and be like, I don't like this one or, um, you know, whatever. Number one, we all recommend the books, and I don't want anybody to be offended if I don't like their books. Number two, <laughs> I'm a high school English teacher, so sometimes I think people think that we're snobs, like we only will read literature, which is not true. If you've read, if you watched any of my videos, you know I'm reading all kinds of things. Stella, just give me a minute, okay? Thank you. Um, that was Stella ringing the bell. She wants to go outside, but she's going to wait for a minute. Uh, so I don't ever want to come off as being a snob, um, but it just, it's, there's no substance to this book for me. So it'll be interesting. I guess I'll find out if any of them watch my videos when they're like, seriously, you did not say that at all. I don't lie. Like I didn't say, oh, I love this book or whatever. Um, I chime in. I get my little things in there. Like several times people mentioned a scene that happened in the book. And I said, yeah, so I'm wondering, like, did she, the lady that owned the book club or the bookstore, did she ever sell a book? Because it looked like she was just handing these books to these girls that were in this reading club. They're college kids. At no point did I see any transactions happening in this supposed bookstore. <laughs> um, and then the characters were very one dimensional for me. That being said, it was a good discussion for our book club because our book club, um, I'm one of the youngest people there and I'm over 50. Uh, so some of our ladies that are in that, most of our ladies that are in that book club went to college during this particular time, which is like late 50s. Like, I think this is like middle to late 50s. Um, so they were in college, and that is what this story is about, are these women that went to Radcliffe during that time period. Some of them are just going to get their MRS degree. Um, some of them are going to actually get a career. There are, uh, there's a group of close friends, uh, but uh, I just didn't like it. I'm giving that a three out of five, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. So there's that one. And then I think that's it. I think I'm going to check real quick. Yeah, so that's it. Those are the ones that I've read since the last time I talked to you. So um, you can see those here. That's my um, stack that I've been reading. Uh, and then I'm in the middle of several books. So I just want to throw those out there to you also. Um, let me find them. How about put them like right here. So I've talked to you about this one. I'm almost done with Wintering, The Power of Rest and Retreat in Difficult Times by Catherine May. I'm trying to finish that one so I don't have to carry it on spring break because obviously it is spring. First day of spring was yesterday and I'm tired of reading this book. <laughs> I like it. It's probably going to be a four out of five, but I just, it's not what I thought and I don't love it. I'm probably going to have to take this one with me and I've been reading it for so long. Why has nobody told me this before by Dr. Julie Smith? Um, and the reason I've been reading it so long is because it is a self-help book and every chapter I feel like takes me a little bit to kind of grasp what it's talking about. Um, and I don't read it every day. So I'm going to take it with me on spring break and finish it up. Um, on, on my Kindle, on my ebook, I am listening to, sorry, on my ebook, my Kindle, I am reading Penny Reed. Finally, I'm getting back to Penny Reed. I absolutely love her. She did the um, Knitting in the City series. So Neanderthal meets, Neanderthal seeks human, Neanderthal marries human, love hacked, like that series. Um, so I am on Ninja at First Sight, which is Knitting in the Series 4.5, I think it says. Um, so I'm reading that one on my Kindle currently. And I am um, listening to the Tanya Cape Capey's, um, what's it, bungalows, burglar, bungalows, something in burglaries, um, campers. What, what's it called? I told you when I was listening to it earlier. Mm. Beaches, bungalows, and burglaries by Tanya Capey's, I think it is. So my cousin pitched out there an idea. Um, there is an event that uh, seems to like move around every year. 
and it's by Tanya Capes. I'm going to figure out how to say that name. I really apologize if I'm saying it incorrectly. Um, and Duffy Brown, Duffy Brown, Duffy Brown, I think that's right. Um, they uh, run an event in every year, like in the fall. And it's usually like two James on a train, I think. And they do like a murder mystery on the train, but then they do like author events or whatever. They're coming to Cincinnati in the fall. So my cousin pitched it and we're going. Um, two dames on a train dash, I think it says boat. I think that's what it is. But it, there's like a gangster tour, um, underground like Cincinnati. There's a boat, like we'll be on the boat and there will be like um, a performing, traveling mystery group or something. And then what's the other one? There's something else that we're going to. Oh, um, it's like at a bar, a prohibition bar, I think in Newport and then like a Newport tour or something. I don't know. Any of you, my cousin pitched it. I know she watches this. So thank you, Deb. I really appreciate it uh, for getting me in on that. Um, and we're going to do that. I think it's in the fall. So there may still be some slots open in that. Honestly, I've just been so overwhelmed with just everything that's been going on lately. I haven't had time to check into it. So when she pitched it, she got us registered and I just then mowed her the money and said, count me in and then I'll deal with the details later. Uh, but I have started um, uh, trying to make my reading plan. So I started reading Beaches, Bungalows and Burglaries or listening to it maybe a year ago or so. I'm pretty sure my sister, and again, I think she watches the videos, but Yolanda, I don't know if you're still watching them or not, but I think she's done the whole series. But I just really did not like the narrator when I started it the first time and I gave up on like chapter three. But because I know that I'm going to this author event, I wanna read some of her stuff. Um, and this is her most famous one, I think. The one, her, the, her most popular. But my gosh, when I looked up her name, she's a cozy mystery. Um, author. I mean, she has like 15 different series, but I'm going to try and do like at least first book in every series um, <clears throat> and go from there. And then Duffy Brown, I have read one of her books. Um, here it is. I thought I was like, I think I have it here. Um, Iced Chiffon, A Consignment Shop Mystery. It's Duffy Brown. Murder is Good Business. I met her at Books by the Banks, which I've talked to you about before. It's in Cincinnati in the fall. It's a phenomenal free book event. I'm telling you, you should be there, especially if you're anywhere in the area and you can just drive in, that would be great. But if not, it's worth it. It's at the Duke Energy Center. It's in the fall. Um, I always post the information and talk it up when it comes close. But several years ago, I bought this book um, and I already read it. I enjoyed it. I didn't continue reading Duffy Brown. I don't really know why I didn't continue. I wanted to and I just, there's so much going on. Um, but I'm going to reread this one and then again, read some more of Duffy Brown's before we get there too. So I am super excited about that. All right. I'm also reading this Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. If you know this cover, you know it's deceiving because it looks like some fluffy little cover. It's very similar to like the Icebreaker um, book covers that if you saw it, you might pick it up and be like, ooh, that's fun. This is smut. So just like Icebreaker, this is very much smut, but it's alien smut. Um, so I have a wide variety. This video, even though I teach high schoolers, is not for high schoolers. Um, if you're watching, I might be your teacher, but I'm not talking to you as your teacher. I'm just a reader. I'm just a librarian that is unemployed as a librarian. <laughs> and I am just connecting people with books. I'm really enjoying this. So several years ago at a... Um, uh, Super Bowl party. There was a girl there. I could see she was reading something on her device and uh, I'm not interested in sports. Uh, so when I saw she was reading something, of course, I strike up a conversation. She was a 20 something, uh, like just barely 20 something, I would say. Um, and we started, she was reading A Court of Thorn and Roses, which I've never read and I keep saying I'm going to and I am going to, but I haven't read it yet. Uh, but I think that's what she was reading, but we got to talking about it. And then her boyfriend came up and was like, oh, did you find somebody to talk about books? Did you tell her about the Ice Planet Barbarians? And she was like, yeah, I told her about it. And I was like, okay, that sounds interesting, but I don't know. This is a couple years ago. Um, but I saw the book one time when I was in a, um, a bookstore, the one down on Beachmont Book Rack, I think, or I think it's Book Rack. Um, and so I bought it because I just wanted to buy a book while I was in there and support that. It's a, a small bookstore here. I wanted to support her. Um, so I bought it and then it's been sitting here and I haven't read it in forever. Picked it up. I'm flying through it. It's so fun. 
but it is smut. If you, um, you know, are opposed to that, don't, don't get this book. Um, it's extremely explicit. It's aliens, <laughs> but the girls have been abducted by one set of aliens, but their ship broke down. So they had to drop them on this ice planet and they were going to go fix their ship and come back. But while the, they're waiting, like why the girls are waiting, these aliens are terrible. I mean, they're abusive, terrible. If you need trigger warnings, make sure you know what, what's coming because it's awful. Um, but you don't really, it's not really super descriptive. Like you know what's happening, but you don't really know what's happening, right? So when they're on this planet, then one of the girls goes out to try and find help or um, supplies because it's freezing and they're starving and she gets trapped by an alien in his animal trap. He wasn't trying to trap her. He doesn't even know what she is. Um, but once he captures her, he's very interested in her. <coughs> Excuse me. So my drink of today is Skyline Chili. We stopped and got dinner. Because my husband's super busy trying to get prepared for spring break. Skyline is a Cincinnati thing. So I had a loaded five-way and I have enough for lunch tomorrow and I'm drinking Pepsi. I also did not light our candle. We have a new candle today too. It is Antique Candle Company. It's Cozy Cabin. Um, I think I bought this in Little Nashville. They're just these teeny tiny little candles. Um, and if you've been watching my videos, you know, we had a soot issue in our house back in 20, 20, 2019. I don't remember, isn't that terrible? It was pre-pandemic. Um, yeah, it was pre-pandemic, um, but we had a soot issue and we had to have the house um, repainted and cleaned and such. And so I'm a little nervous <laughs> um, about using candles. It didn't have anything to do with candles. Supposedly it had to do with our fireplace, but I don't, I really just don't believe anybody at this point. Um, but it was such a traumatic experience. I'm not very big on lighting candles like I used to light multiple candles every day. I had, had them going in every room. I just don't do that anymore. But I like this little size and I like to just have it on when I'm in this room or if I'm sitting outside on the porch um, or I'm working at my table, I like to have a little one there, right? So it's nice, but cozy cabin, it's a lovely little smell. Anywho, um, I will, oh, I'm almost finished with this and I really, really like it. I'm sure it's gonna get a four out of five, um, but just know what you're getting into on that one. I'm really loving the Ninja at First Sight by Penny Reed also, the ebook. I'm just flying through that one too. I just, I know I love Penny Reed. Penny Reed also has a bit of the smut factor, but you know, like, I don't know how you want to define those, right? So when I talked about Icebreaker in my last film, it had a good central story. It really did. And it's okay to have some of the scenes that are there but it used a lot of my ick words, like, <clears throat> like too much. And then it was like all, by the time you got to where they finally got together, it was just descriptive scene after descriptive scene after descriptive scene. And I just don't really, that's not my thing. Like I didn't, I didn't care for it. I wanted to know what was going to happen with the characters at the end. So I continued reading it. I think I probably gave it four out of five too. Um, this one, maybe some of the ick words, but not in as bad of a sense as Icebreaker. And then Penny Reed again. Penny Reed's humor is what I'm drawn to. This is also humorous. Um, so both of those I really enjoyed, uh, but I'm loving Ninja at first sight and I'm glad to get back to knitting, at, knitting in the city. All right, that being said, um, there are a couple of seasonal books, you know, if you've been with me at all, um, I love to do seasonal books. So I want to throw a couple of those out there and then some revisits. Um, uh, last month I reviewed one of the Amanda Flowers books for you. So um, I forgot I had also done this, um, Premeditated Peppermint and Amish Candy Shop Mystery. It was already on my shelf and I have reviewed that for you before. Last month it was the Farm to Table one that was by Amanda Flowers that I talked to you about. Um, but I had also um, read Criminally Coco by her, and I noticed that I did not actually talk to you on a YouTube video. So I read Criminally Coco back on back in 2019. It is also an Amish candy shop mystery. It's number 3.5. I honestly don't know what peppermint is. 
This is three, and then Criminally Cocoa is 3.5, so it's probably also a bit shorter. It would be a good one to do around spring or Easter. Um, I'm not a big Amish fan, a fan of the Amish, like the lifestyle, just religion, eh, that's, that one's not for me. Um, but I was drawn to a seasonal one, and it's Amish candy store, so I don't know. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. It was a really quick read. It was a quick cozy. Um, it had a very unique backstory and some fun, quirky characters. I'm not a big Amanda Flower fan so far. Like, I liked Premeditated Peppermint. I liked Criminally Cocoa. I liked Farm to Table much more. I will continue doing the Farm to Table. The um, book group that I sit in on their book chats, their live book chats and book sprints, the Killing Time with Cozies, they're going to read the farm to table mystery, at least the first couple, and then revisit or talk about it. Um, that is on Beach Bum Bookworms um, YouTube channel, so you might want to check that out. Um, but I enjoy their reading sprints on Sunday afternoons, um, sometimes Monday nights. I think they move around to somebody else's channel. Um, but I enjoy those, and they're reading those stories, so I wanted to do Amanda Flower with them. Um a couple of weekends ago, I went to Paducah, Kentucky for my daughter-in-law's bachelorette weekend. And my sister and I on Sunday on the way out stopped at Etc. Coffee House. If you are ever in Paducah and you have the opportunity to go to that coffee house, it's everything you want in a coffee house. I mean, it's quirky, beautiful little building. The people were ultra friendly. Um, the food was phenomenal. There was a little place you went out back and they had tables out. It was lovely. It was lovely. And they had a basket of free books provided by, I don't remember. I'll see if I can put that picture as one of my um, intro photos. Um, but they had a little basket provided by, I think it was a consignment shop or something that was there. And I didn't need any of the books that were there, but they had this one pamphlet that says Songs for Caged Birds by Keith Wagner. And it's a little um, zine, like a little self-published thing of poetry. So I'm taking that with me on, on spring break. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading that. Um, Tommy Aviemi, Children of Blood and Bone, uh, is becoming a movie. So I wanted to throw this one out there to you. I had reviewed this back in 2020. I mentioned it in several of my videos, seven, eight, nine, ten, quite a few. It is young adult and it's fantasy, but they're turning this into a movie, so you might want to read it before it comes out. Um, it's really well done. It's very in-depth, though, so just so you know, um, you want to give yourself plenty of time. And the audio is a performance. I mean, it is just lovely. If you're a fantasy fan and you haven't quite made it to Children of Blood and Bone, I'm telling you, take the time to listen to it. Take the time to read it. It is long, like 17 hours. But it is so worth it. It's told from multiple points of view. It follows two sets of siblings from two different cultures um, or like castes, but uh, within the same region, but they're two different, two different siblings. I think that you can even listen to the first chapter on YouTube. All right, I'm looking at my Goodreads review and there's a typo on there. I used there instead, T-H-E-I-R instead of T-H-E-R-E. I'm horrified that that's been out there in the interweb since 2020. So I'm gonna have to go in and edit that. Um, but even back then there was a movie in the works, but I hear that it's actually gonna be coming out pretty quickly. So um, I'm just telling you, it's so good. And I know it's fantasy, but it does really line up with like sign of the times on how things are working. Um, I, I love it. So I'm just gonna put that in the stack of um, books that are becoming movies so that um, we can keep revisiting it whenever it comes out. And I mean, if you know me, I swear, I get so excited that they're gonna make a movie out of a book and then I never watch it. I really wanna watch this one. Uh, it's been long enough since I've read it that I don't think I would be as judgy as sometimes I am. The next book club book that um, I have for my in-person book club, which will be in May, I think, is um, Killers of the Flower Moon. It's my choice. I recommended that one. Uh, and I still have not watched the movie. I hear it's like super, super long too. So I'll watch it before um, book club to refresh my memory. But the book is phenomenal. I know it didn't win a lot of things at the Oscars. And I don't really have anybody in my life that watches the Oscars or follows them like that closely. So I would love to have somebody to talk to about that. Like why didn't it win Oscars? But I haven't seen it. So maybe it doesn't deserve it. I don't know. Um, in my book haul, I picked up an Agatha Christie at Bertram's Hotel. 
Um, and I just don't think that I had shown that one to you. I picked it up at Half Price Books. I paid $10 for it. I'm pretty sure it does. It has a, a William H. Harrison High School library sticker on it. So it's a discarded book and I paid $10 for it. But the kicker is I couldn't find, I haven't had a copy of this. So I've been on this Agatha, um, you know, thing for project for two and a half years. So I pick up any Agatha anytime I see it. Sometimes they're duplicates so that I can pass them around to our group and put them in my classroom. Um, and then sometimes I want multiple copies of the covers because they're beautiful, but this one just did not come up. So when I saw it, I'm like, okay, it's $10, but I'm buying it. Um, this slacker Gordon Corman, I found in a free library, free little library. So I switched. I was looking at the one, um, I, there's one here at where I live at Lake Lorelei that we can walk to. Um, well, Stella and I walked to it, but she acts like she's not going to make it home, but she does. Uh, and then there's also one, like, I think I might've gotten this one in front of one of the Coleraine, like intermediate or middle schools. Um, there's a little free library and I pulled in there and I put a book in and I took this one out for my classroom because I love Gordon Corman and look at that cover. It's called Slacker. It looks super fun. I think <clears throat> excuse me. I think this is the one that I got at the free little library here at Lorelei. So I just carried a couple of books down there, put them in. And then uh, luckily there was one that I wanted, but if not, I was just going to put the other ones in. This is all the little raindrops by Mia Sheridan. I've heard about that author before. So super excited about that. Um, I think this one was uptown at Fayetteville. I like to stop and restock their library and this Sarah Pierce, the retreat was in there. So I grabbed that one. I picked these up in Wilmington, um, Philip Craig's Murder at a Vineyard Mansion, a Martha's Vineyard Mystery. And I need to look, I'm pretty sure that this is the Hallmark series. Yeah, I did look that up. This comes from that Hallmark, the Hallmark series, um, Martha's Vineyard Murders, comes from this particular um, series. It's Philip R. Craig, but it looks really old. I paid $2.99 for these. No, it's 2004. It just, it looks old, but um, I thought that looks like a good one. That would be a good one to take on vacation. And then I picked up a copy of Hollow City, um, the Miss Peregrine's second novel, Miss Peregrine's P Peculiar Children, which I'm pretty sure I've talked to you about before. Another copy. I didn't have a copy of Hollow City. I've read it, but I didn't have a copy. So that one will go on my shelves. I picked up a copy of, nope. Um, I think it was in the last video, I had picked up a copy of I Am The Messenger by Marcus Zusak for my classroom. I had a copy here, um, but I looked and I did not have a Goodreads review. So um, let me put that one over here. I love this book. I love Marcus Zusak. So he is the guy who did Book Thief, which you're probably more familiar with because it was a book, um, I would say more intermediate to middle school, and then they turned it into a phenomenal movie. Um, that one I have seen. Uh, I need to rewatch it though, because it's been a really, really long time. But this is his book that's more for young adults, and I would say like junior seniors. Now, I would give it to some of my freshmen if they were um, ones that read books that I would feel comfortable having this one. But it, he's more of a 20-something, um, and he, the guy, the main guy in this one, he's more of a 20-something. He's normal, um, but he he's not very adventuresome. He doesn't have big goals. Um, he's just kind of scooting through life. He drives a taxi. He has a dog that talks. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love, love, love the character of the dog. It's kind of, um, odd Thomas-ish, kind of. So, Ed starts getting these messages where he needs to go help people, but he doesn't know why someone would think that he's the kind of person that goes and helps people in need. Um, but he can't ignore it. He has ignored it. It did not go well. So he can't ignore it when someone tells him he needs to go help someone. Um, so he goes, but he doesn't really understand why somebody would choose him because he's so normal. Uh, and so there's a bit of mysticism because you're not sure if it's a person who's giving him this notes or is it the universe saying, hey, Ed, you need to do something. Um, it's just bizarre and it's good bizarre. It's heartwarming, it's inspirational, it's life affirming, it's suspenseful, it's a bit thriller-ish. But it's my favorite trope. My favorite trope is when someone comes into their own. 
um, they don't know or they're searching, but they just don't quite know how to make things work out or, you know, who they are. Um, I love that trope. And that is definitely I Am the Messenger by Marcus Zusak. I love it. I wanted to throw out a couple of those seasonal books. I think I said that earlier and then I like completely did not do that. What's that resting on? Oh, a very little Agatha Christie. So let me move that over. Um, and a couple that I've reviewed for you in the past and I'm gonna throw back out there. You could just read the poem. You could just look it up, E.E. E. Cummings in Just Spring, but I have the picture book. But I wanted to throw that one out there again because it's a lovely little poem about spring. And E.E. E. Cummings, poetry is meant to be viewed. So you could probably find it online, but if you go to your public library, this is a beautiful rendering of it. The paintings are by Heidi Gunnell. Um, so I'm gonna put that one back out there. You might wanna put that on your seasonal reading list. I've also recommended this little Mary Inglebright Spring. She has a set of these books. If you are a Mary Inglebright fan, she's an artist that I love. I have her dishes. I have tons of stuff by Mary Inglebright. I love her stuff. Um, she does greeting cards rubber stamps, like I make cards with her images. I love, love, love her stuff. But she has a set of these books that are seasonal, so I always like to decorate with that too, like have the book out because it says spring on it. And then this little hundreds of things to do on a rainy day. You know, I love lists and it just, it goes through things to do. Like if you're bored, you could flip through, balance your own checking account, decide which was tougher to do. Recall the friends of your youth, figure out how old they are, and then mentally line them up like the Rockettes and have them dance. Name the flowers of each state. Draw roadmaps with wrong directions for people you don't want to get there. They're just fun. Listen to a symphony. Design the floor plan for a house. Just fun little things. And again, it's just a list. And I love lists, but that's a cute little seasonal book. I had recommended to you, I believe in the last video, David Leviathan's um, The Lover's Dictionary. And I've recommended it before. And I've mentioned David Leviathan's Realm of Possibility. I don't have a copy of this book, but um, I wanted to mention it because I mentioned David Leviathan last month. And Realm of Possibility is another one of those super unique young adult reads. Good for anybody, I read it as an adult. Um, but it was the first book that I read by him. And uh, he also did Will Grayson, Will Grayson, which I've talked about. And he does that with John Green, I believe. Pretty sure. Um, but it's the realm of possibility is a collection of short stories that intertwine. It's a really easy one to recommend because even if you have a very short attention span, learning each person's story individually and then realizing that they are coming together, I think it's a good book that um, when people, when you introduce it to a young person who maybe isn't a big reader, they realize that books are not what they've always known. Like you can find a book that does something new and fresh and that might make it more interesting. So I highly recommend all of the David Leviathans that I have read, I really enjoyed. Um, and I think I have a couple of other books by him too that like are on my to be read list that I've mentioned. Um, so I can, I want to continue reading his. I also like that he has diverse back or diverse characters. So if you are looking for LGBTQ um, or young adult books for young adults who um, have alternative lifestyles and they're looking for themselves in books, then David Leviathan is a good one to look for. I also added a review for um, Diane Mott Davidson's Dying for Chocolate, A Goldie Bear Culinary Mystery, because I had mentioned that one to you also in a previous video. Um, and I told you, I just, I didn't realize that the Goldie Bear um, culinary mystery series on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries was from a book. And then whenever I saw what it was from, I'm like, I've read one of those. So the one that I read was number two, Dying for Chocolate, uh, but I didn't have a review out there for it. So I added that. Um, I don't remember a whole lot about it. I remember liking it, but I really don't remember a whole lot about it. But now I'll go back and maybe I'll read the first one in the series and then go from there. I also am not sure that the books line up with the episodes. Um, so that's another thing I need to do a deep dive and I'll let you know. But I do, I enjoyed the book and I really enjoy the series on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. So if you're a cozy movie fan, um, if, if you're a cozy mystery fan, you might want to catch that series as well as reading the series. I don't know how I did not have a review out there for Gone Girl. In my last video, I also recommended to you Jillian Flynn, um, 
because they are making her book dark objects into a movie. So I always try and tell you like when there's a book that's becoming a movie. I haven't read that one, but I read Gone Girl. And um, I can't believe I don't have a review out there for it because I've talked about it so many times. So Gone Girl, when I read it, I did not love it. I liked it, but I did not love it. Um, and then I went and heard the author speak um, down in Cincinnati, I think at the library. And the first thing she said was, if you are someone who needs to like your characters, don't read my books. And it just clicked. I immediately was like, that's why I don't like it. There are no redeemable characters in this book. They're terrible people and they deserve what they get. Um, I just did not like, I did not like it. And then after I heard her speak, I went back and revisited the book and I'm like, okay, this is masterful. This is really good. I can see why people really enjoy this. And then they made the movie, and I remember going to the movie with my friend Stephanie. Again, Stephanie, I don't know if you watch these videos or not, but I'm sure you'll remember. I laughed inappropriately at the wrong times, and she was like, people are going to think you're a psychopath. You need to stop laughing. This is not supposed to be a funny movie. But I just remembered, like, what was coming, and I couldn't, I just was like, this is masterful. Like, <laughs> it's so well done. Um, so I, some, I feel like the electric went out too, and we missed like the last part of the movie. I don't know something bizarre happened, but, um, <laughs> she was like, people are turning around looking at us because you're being a weirdo by laughing. Uh, but it was really well done. Uh, so I don't know how I didn't already have a review for that. So I highly recommend watching the movie, reading the book. Um, if it's one that got past you back then, it would be a great beach read. So if you are someone who's looking for like a book to really keep your interest while you're on vacation, spring break, or summer, it would be a phenomenal one. I forgot to say that Duffy Brown also has a psychopath mystery series, so I'm interested in reading that one. I think that'll be fun since we have the bike path here in um, Loveland. Maybe that would be one that would be fun to like listen to as I'm walking the, back, the bike path with like my dad and my dog. Um, my dad loves the bike path. Yeah, so I'm going to hopefully do that one. Uh, and both have a really good online presence. When I looked up Duffy Brown, I printed out um, some of her series. And then I printed out some of the Tanya Kappas. And I am so sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I need to look up how to say her last name. But her covers are phenomenal. I mean, they're just lovely. Um, and second time around, I still don't love the narrator. Her accent does not hold true. But because I know I'm doing it for a reason, I'm suffering through. And um, I don't know that it's growing on me, but it's tolerable. So we'll see. Uh, a black cake. Why do I have this one out? Oh, Black Cake, they also turned into a movie, but I haven't watched it yet. Um, black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson, but I reviewed that one for you in the past. And just a reminder, in case you didn't know, they did turn that into a movie, but I haven't watched it yet. So oh, um, I need to look and see if I have recommended them to you. But At Home and Mifford by Jan Karen, I love that series. I've read all of them up until when she started spinoffs. So I need to go back and read. I would like to read her newer ones. Um, but it's on Hallmark, on demand. It's a terrible <laughs> um, adaptation, but it has one, the guy that plays Father Tim. I love that actor. I can't think of what his name is, um, but he's on Hallmark movies, and I really like him. Um, and then the one that plays the, um, artist, I can't, the author, um, Andy McDowell. I just, I don't love her. I just, I don't love her in anything that she does. I don't know why that is. I'm sure she's a perfectly nice person, but I just, I don't love her. Um, and it just doesn't do the novel justice. I was happy to have it on like in the background while I was doing something else. But if you've read that series, it is available on demand on homework. I need to return to Percy Jackson and finish watching that series on Disney. Okay, that does it. Um, I've been taping a little over an hour, so I am going to stop it there. And then I'm going to do a separate video um, where I do some reviews of some of the books that I've been recommending in my classroom. But I don't want to add that into this particular video. I just feel like it's making my videos too long. Um, and it's for um, maybe a more targeted um, audience. So catch that video too. I will um, film it and I'll probably put this one out and then put the other one out. So hopefully just keep an eye on it and it'll be there. I hope you're enjoying my videos. Uh, we have one more day with students and then one more day with professional development and then we'll be off on spring break. 
Um, and we have about a week, I think a week and a day or something ridiculous like that. And I'm hoping to spend it um, with my son. My father-in-law is currently um, in a bit of a health crisis. He's been in the hospital. He's been in a rehabilitation place. So if all goes well, he should be going home and we should be good to go on spring break. Um, but maybe not. And if not, then I'll do more videos. Um, but if we do, then I'll edit and then put these in. I'll put these out there then. So thanks for spending time with me. You know how much I love to talk to you about books and recommend things to you. Let me know what you're looking for. Let me know what you're reading. Remember, you can get all these books for free at your public library. You do not need to purchase them. Um, I get most of my books um, by thrift. <coughs> Although I do have a Barnes & Noble book card, uh, gift card from my husband from Christmas. And I have a list of books that I want to get. You know how that is? Like you go and if you bought the books that are on your list, it would be like $250. But my gift card is probably for $50. So whatever. Um, it'll be like whatever they have on hand, I'm sure. Um, but I'm hoping to maybe stop on the way down there or maybe on the way back. So we'll see. Hit the subscribe and like button and check out some of my other videos. Comment below. Let me know what it is that um, you're currently reading or if you have comments on any of the books that I've talked about. Thanks, folks. A coffee cup with steam curling out the top was embroidered on the front. What do you want to eat? She tapped the top of the pie stand with her pen. Hey folks, welcome back. I'm DeShane 11, your friendly librarian, and I'm back with some book love, so let's chat. This is not a normal um, book chat episode for us. So just so you know, I don't have any new books to share with you. Um, I'm not doing a book haul. I'm just going to get through some of the ones that I recommend in my high school English class. I teach freshmen, um, but not all these books are young adult, but they're books that um, I either have reviewed or recommended in my class um, over the years. Uh, hmm, no. In the last couple of years, no. Some of them I've already talked to you about and then some of them I haven't. But I said at the beginning of the school year, I was going to highlight those books that I recommend in my classes. And I've tried to do that within the regular episodes, but it's getting a little too backed up. Um, and my episodes were just getting too long. So the last one I just finished filming. So I have the same shirt on. Um, and I will edit it hopefully over spring break here and get that out to you. So this is kind of a 0.5. That's probably what it'll be is like 45.5. How's that? Um, so that you don't get it confused with one of my regular like book haul and new book reviews. Um, but I want to share some of those books with you, some of those books with you. So um, here they go. So the first one that I wanted to point out to you is Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. Um, I read this book when I was in college and it was a lot for me, even when I was in college. So this is not one that I have um, that I really recommend to my freshmen. But I have a copy in my room because sometimes I do have upperclassmen and sometimes I have someone who actually asked for it because of the HBO series. So it's another one of those, like I don't censor the books that are in my classroom, but I'm careful as to who gets what book or what books are like set out to the general public and then which ones I have um, access to. Um, but I do love this book and I highly recommend it. It's a great one for adults to read for sure. Uh, and it's a great foray into the adult literature if I've got someone who's reading other things like Game of Thrones or um, they're already reading adult books, they're reading Tolkien. Um, those are complicated books, so they're fine with the Margaret Atwood. Uh, you can see it's still got my old name on there. But highly recommend Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. It's a dystopian book, and it's a, a dystopian book that was written in like the 80s, I think. Um, I have still not watched the adaptation from HBO because I don't have HBO. This was um, published in 1985, and I went to college in like 1990, so it was a pretty modern novel at the time. Um, but super, super good feminist literature. Um, I love it. I love Margaret Atwood altogether, so after I read The Handmaid's Tale, I have continued to read her works. 
I read Cat's Eye um, by her also, and then also Oryx and Crank, which is another super weird dystopian kind of book, but I would recommend any of them. The Oryx and Crank is the Mad Apple series. I reviewed it back on Goodreads in 2019. And I've talked to you about Margaret Atwood in episodes, um, the first student video that I did, 2020, I'm sorry, episode 20, episode 22, and episode 24. So highly recommend Margaret Atwood. Um, and since I've already talked about her, I'm not going to spend too much time on her. But I know on my To Be Read shelf up there, I have a lot of Margaret Atwoods that I still need to get to. I highly recommend, and um, it's one that I read out loud, like it, like First Chapter Friday, The Nightmare Fair by Mindy Arnett. Pretty sure she's an Ohio author. I've met her a couple of times, and I feel like I've met her because she's around Ohio, like Columbus. Um, and I've read a couple of her books and recommended them. I love Avalon. It's a space young adult book. Um, they're on a spaceship, but um, it doesn't feel Star Trek-y. It feels very modern, just happening in space. And then Nightmare Fair is a fantasy one. The main character, Dusty, is a nightmare. She feeds off of people's nightmares. And uh, one night when she's doing that, she sees something in someone's um, nightmare that she shouldn't see. And she has to team up with someone that she doesn't want to team up with and solve a murder. Um, and I've recommended that one to you too. Episodes 14, 15, 22, 25, 31 point, or 31 and a half. I don't know why I did a 31 and a half. Oh, probably because it was like an autumn books. So, highly recommend Mindy Arnett. I've talked to you about David Baldassi before. I don't know that I knew that my stack was so high, but he's another one that I keep in my classroom and recommend frequently. I've talked about him in episodes 22, 24, and 35. Um, I love The Christmas Train, not for young adults. Like, they could read it, but I don't think they would be very interested in it. But it is a lovely holiday romance. I always recommend it to you um, around the holidays. Put it on your list. If you're doing that seasonal calendar of what to read when seasonally this year, read The Christmas Train and Christmas. But he has some other ones that I've read and also would recommend. Wish you well. Um, David Baldassi writes thrillers mainly. I don't really feel like Wish You Well is a thriller. Um, it's more a historical fiction because it happens in 1940 and it's kind of a coming of age kind of story, but it's also a love story. Um, so if you've read some of his stuff, he doesn't always stick with the same genre. Like another one that he did was um, This One Summer, which they have also turned into a TV ad adaptation and I don't think I've seen it yet. I need to find that one. But this is more of a love story also. Tragic. Um, definitely a tragic story, but also a love story. Hey. All righty. I was vid uh, filming, so I just had it on. I just saw that you called. Can you come get me or no? You want to do it in a little bit? No, just um, let me finish. I've got a little stack here I'm talking about, and then I will head out. I'll pull into the marina and then just swing down there. I'll drive over there with you. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Yep, bye. My husband just called. I have to go pick him up because we're getting like the cart or the trucks getting sent off for service and we have to like drop the car off or whatever. I don't know. Anywho, so going to be a shorter video than I expected, but that's okay. Maybe it'll just be a short video. But David Baldassi also has the one that is one summer. Um, you could put it on your summer reading list. It's not my favorite by him though. I, I really do like him. I would read anything by him. Um, but this one just, it's just not, it's not as good for me. Uh, I, I don't know. I just felt like it was a little bit too tragic for me. <laughs> like, it's a ridiculous storyline, but I get it. I don't mind 
um, ironic storylines. It just wasn't great. This is The Christmas Train. I mean, I have reread this book several times and there is a, a TV adaptation and it's very well done. Just really fun to watch around Christmas time. And then I think the rest of these might be ones that are on my to be read list. I don't think I have read these yet. Uh, we have Walk the Wire, The Keeper, One Good Deed, Saving Faith, The Winner, The Finisher. And I think some of these are young adult novels too. I just haven't read them and The Innocent. So I will read some of his other ones for sure. Like I'm glad these are on my to be read shelf, but um, so far it's just um, The Christmas Train, One Summer, Wish You Well. I think those are the only other ones that I've actually read by him. And I don't think I've talked to you about Wish You Well before, but I did like Wish, Wish You Well. I just um, didn't like it as much as The Christmas Train. But The Christmas Train is like funny romance, um, whereas Wish You Well is very heartwarming. It is a love story, a little more historical. And then One Summer is just a bit too tragic, I think, for me. And then the last one that I'm going to talk to you about, and I better go pick him up, is a nonfiction one. It's She Said Yes by um, Misty Bernal. And I love to recommend this one to the students because a lot of them don't know about this particular shooting incident. Um, it's the Colorado one um, and it, you know, predates them. So it's always interesting to talk to them a little bit about when that happened and how it changed security in schools. <clears throat> and then also when we talk about controversies over books because this book was published and uh, Misty Burnell, who is the mother of um, Casey Burnell, or Cassie, Casey, Cassie Burnell, the student who was killed during the Colorado, the school shootings. Um, she, Misty Burnell was aware that some of the things that she was saying, she might not have gotten good information on, but she went ahead and published the book anyway, and I'm perfectly fine with her doing that. Um, but the story is that she said yes, that this girl was in the library and she is one of the students that the killers, the two student killers, walked up to and asked if they believed in God and then they executed, executed them. Afterward, some of the students that witnessed it, I believe, um, came out and said, you don't quite have your facts straight, that wasn't her, um, but they went ahead and published the, the book anyway. And to me, it doesn't matter. I mean, obviously I want the truth told, so whoever that did happen to, they can tell, you know, their story should also be told. But this is really a story about how, um, Cassie had already changed her life leading up to this particular event. Um, and it's just, it's an inspiring story. And it's also a heartbreaking story knowing how many lives were cut off in that um, school shooting. So it's always a good one for me to recommend. So that's A and B so far. Um, I've recommended some of the other books in with my other episodes. So if you're looking for young adult books, um, they'll be in that. And then possibly tomorrow, hopefully I'll get another minute to do some more. I would love to do some Meg Cabots for you, um, but it's just such a big stack that it really needs another video like pulled out. So once again, thanks for joining me here in my home library. And a lot of these books are in my um, library at work. I pick them up like thrift. And then again, like I said, several of the foundations will just buy us books that we ask for for certain titles. Um, and I would say that Mindy Arnett was probably in that one. And I've thrifted some of her books. I know I've, I have a student that's been reading through that whole series this year. So gratifying. Uh, but thanks for joining me in my library today. Remember, you can get all of these books for free at your public library or cheap at thrift stores or half price books. Enjoy. Want to take a ride? Come on. Whoops. We should probably stop that. <laughs>